everyone it's Sydney and welcome back to my YouTube channel if you're new here welcome this is my new series where I'm going to be talking about planning my wedding and tips and tricks for how to do it on your own or with very little help so I've been engaged for about a year and a half now and I get married in about two months so in February I'm getting married in Mexico and today's video is going to be talking about the free tools that I use to help stay organized and plan this wedding by myself. I have pretty bad ADHD so I didn't want to plan a wedding at all. I didn't even want a wedding because it stressed me out having to think about like all the stuff that goes into it. Anyway, so I figured I'd share those tools because it's super helpful for whether you're planning a destination wedding or just a local wedding, or even if you're just planning a big event with both like inspiration and also like how I'm actually putting all of my vision into fruition. Okay, so you just got engaged. Here is the first thing that I would do before you even start doing anything else is make a shared email with your partner one that maybe is going to be specific for the wedding or but you can also just use it for anything that's for both of you in the future that way you can both log in and decide on a password that you're going to use that is going to be for both of you logging into that email and then any other account for other websites and online tools that I'm going to tell you about my fiance and I just did my name and his name 2025 at gmail but that is super helpful for organizing um any contact that you're going to be having with any vendors or planners or travel agents or anything like that so that way you don't have to remember to tell your partner about something you can just um both get the notification for it right away and it also helps with finding emails because I get a million and one emails from work, you know, ads and stuff like that, um, subscriptions that I've signed up for. So this is all separate so that I can just, if I just want to see stuff that is regarding my wedding, it's all going to be under that email. When it came to deciding our guest list and how many guests we were going to have, the first thing that we started, because I have a hard time like imagining what 100 people looks like. So what we did was we made a shared notes app. Um, so in the iPhone feature for notes, you can have it so that both of you can be collaborating on it. It's gonna show up in both of your phones. You can also use a Google Doc for this, but I didn't discover using Google Docs until a little bit later on, and my fiance didn't have it, so notes app was easier for us. So we started just making a list of everybody that we wanted to be there. Um, and this way, because both of us work and we're on different schedules, so we don't have a lot of time to like sit down and, and plan together. So these were tools that we could both do separately. So I could do it while I, I'm on my lunch break and he can add to it and see it too. Um, so we broke it down into like our friends and then like his family, my family, his other friends or coworkers or people that he knows are family friends and same thing with me also like labeled things depending on okay if we think they would actually go like if we just put like different emojis or like these are like the absolute must go and then like what who we we're planning on having for our bridal party something i wish that i had done sooner was starting to collect email addresses and addresses way earlier on in the process because it would have made it a lot less stressful by the time it was time to send out or save the dates once we had done the planning of where and when the wedding is going to be um so pretty much as soon as you get engaged just start texting your friends what's your email address well we actually use the wedding website because there is a guest tracker there but you can upload a spreadsheet to, with all the information to those websites so i would recommend doing it in a like a Google sheet or something first. It's just a little bit easier to coordinate and then like who's gonna have a plus one or who, if it's a couple, how that how that's gonna work for later on when you're addressing envelopes and stuff like that. So I would start asking people what their email addresses are or their address even, um, just so you can have it once that time comes. Name, email, phone number, and their address. Google Docs ended up being a really helpful tool for me just for keeping all of my thoughts organized. Um, so I had a lot of communication between me and the wedding travel agent 
it's all under the like one email even if it's on the phone or on the computer sometimes things got like mixed around so if I'm looking for a specific email they sent me with like a specific uh, like quote for something sometimes it was super hard to find through all of the other emails so what I started doing was just screenshotting the most important messages and putting them into a Google Doc and then just kind of organizing the Google Doc as more and more information came along with uh, like okay this is like the resort information this is this and and so on and the quotes and everything um, just so I can always have it to refer back to especially like later on when I'm budgeting more instead of having to scroll through a bunch of emails and messages it's always right there and I can share that with my fiance too but I've kind of learned that it's easier for me to just do the whole thing so also in the Google Doc you could add any list of like prospective vendors or photographers or anything so as you're starting to research I started um, adding all of the links to the websites of the people that I was thinking about hiring um, and getting quotes from them and then putting their what their quotes were in there I started finding a lot of my photographers through like just Instagram like um, we're getting married in Cancun area so I just started typing in like Cancun wedding photographer and then I would go to like any pages on my discover page that looked like um, I liked their work and then I would also go to like people that they followed because a lot of those photographers in the same area follow each other and then I like n narrowed it down to like a handful and of course most photographers and videographers and a lot of those type of vendors don't post their rates so um, I reached out to like my top three and got price quotes from them and then I would put them into the Google Doc as well just so I could remember okay uh, who was at what price and what does their work look like and stuff like that and then that's how we made a decision from there. I got a lot of my inspiration initially from Pinterest, Instagram, even YouTube and TikTok. Looking up uh, just like wedding videos and stuff like that to see what I liked, um, people were doing, what, what kind of dresses I liked and what I thought would look good on me and stuff like that before I even started dress shopping. The thing that you have to keep in mind with stuff like Pinterest or what's showing up on your Instagram reels, especially when it comes to like content and stuff like that. A lot of those, if it looks expensive, it is. And I know if you've been looking at just other people talking about wedding planning and how to start wedding planning, that's the one thing that you're probably going to see over and over again is how expensive everything is. And the pricing is just not transparent. Like you, if you see, this beautiful like floral arrangement and floral arch um, that you really are inspired by on like Pinterest or something. Keep in mind that like it's probably tens of thousands of dollars just for those florals. I started making like a Pinterest board just for wedding and first I would do like just whatever I liked as far as color scheme and stuff like that but then I would start specifically pinning things that I think that I could either make on my own or find a cheap alternative to do it and then from there because at first you're just Pinterest was honestly super helpful but pinning every single thing that you like and that you would want to have how I narrowed it down from there was by making a Google slide or like a PowerPoint but I personally like Google slides because for one I don't have Microsoft Office because you have to pay for it but also you can just do it from any device so on my work computer I would just go on my Google Slides log into my Google account but then later if I had an idea or something I wanted to do from home I could just do it from the app on my phone the Google Slides app so that was super helpful um, and narrowing it down into like what my basically what my vision was for the wedding just to kind of keep organized and keep on track of how I want this wedding to look and feel and what I want the vibes to be without getting so carried away it's a lot of ideas and information, especially in the beginning. So having tools that are going to help you stay organized and stay on track with what you want is um, something that I would really recommend utilizing. And these are all free tools. So on the Google slides, like I first thing I did was like put my like color scheme that I wanted the colors to be. Then once I got my dress, I added in an actual picture of my dress and like what kind of suit I wanted my fiance to probably wear. And then I had it broken down into like ceremony. So once we had our vendor, I like actually took a picture of what the like ceremony location looks like and just like put it on the slide and then put it next to a picture of like the my like floral 
concept and then like also with next to a picture of my dress and that so I could picture everything together in the actual venue where we're going to be getting married and then same thing with like once we decided on our cocktail hour location at the resort that we're staying at it's gonna be on the beach so then I was like putting pictures and kind of like adding things on top of each other so that it all looks like I can see what my bridesmaid dresses are gonna look like next to my dress on the beach um, which is a little bit excessive but I just like to have that vision so that I again know what what it's gonna look like and make sure that what I have in my head is actually basically what it's gonna look like and then same thing with the reception and reception is probably the biggest one because then I'm looking into details about okay how do I incorporate all these different colors without spending a bunch of money on florals like what napkins and charger plates and stuff like that and then I would just like put in notes like because my bridesmaids are all going to be wearing different color dresses so like in the notes before I had decided on the dresses I just like put the ideas of like this color this color this color this color and then like how many bridesmaids we were going to have and then ideas for that and then as I took away ideas I, you know you can edit it as you go but now that it's getting down to crunch time it's amazing how much I still haven't really like changed from the beginning when I started the slides which I'm really happy about because it can be so easy to change your mind or later down the road find new inspiration and then you second guess yourself I, especially because so much more of the content that I'm seeing now like on Instagram and stuff is like wedding related now I'm like seeing dresses that I wish I wouldn't have settled for mine but it's all gonna be okay and so putting all those pictures of the actual things that is gonna be what my wedding is gonna be like onto a page with like the background of what what the venue is gonna look like and everything it does a good job of like making me feel excited about it and not regret my decisions if that makes sense another thing that I did added to my main like wedding Google Doc is a to-do list and a to buy list and since I've had a pretty long engagement this has been helpful with keeping on track because I wanted to have a long engagement so that I didn't feel so stressed out about um, everything that I needed to do when my fiance and I both have very busy lives. Since I had a lot more time, I kept track of everything that I had already done and everything that I still needed to do. Initially, I just started like already buying little things once I made decisions just so that I could over time already start collecting everything that I'm going to need for the wedding and I keep it in like a separate box and a separate closet in my house um, that's all designated for the wedding. So I, that's the checklist that I keep of everything that I've already bought for it and things that I still need to get um, because once I was started getting in the zone of buying things, I wanted to just keep getting more and more things. But certain things, I wasn't just, I wasn't quite yet at the stage of like having made a decision about what everything's gonna look like and stuff like that. So it's just something that I added to the to do list or to the to buy list of okay, eventually I'm gonna need this. Like I still need to get a veil, and it just took it taken me some time to decide what kind of veil I want and then I debated like oh, do I even want to wear the dress that I bought like maybe I'll get something different and then of course I'll need a different veil but now I know what veil I probably want or at least the idea of it so that's on the list so I just ordered my shoes so I could check those off the list and then like on the to-do list is like stuff like getting your dress altered uh, finding the grooms and groomsmen's tuxes and stuff like that um, and I really itemize everything so like tie shoes suit for the groomsmen and the groom and any little like if you're doing like wedding favors or anything like that that's all things that it will also help you with your packing list like if you're doing it out out of the state or out of the country wedding like me it's gonna be nice to look through those things and just make sure that I remember to actually put them in my suitcase um, but that has been super helpful for me it is actually just like having a list of making sure I have everything done for the longest time I was like oh my god we have so much time like we don't even need to be doing any of this yet and now it's like oh my gosh why didn't I do more while I still had so much time because now I'm short on time and like way more broke because we've had to spend so much money on like uh, the venue and stuff like that that um, I wish I would have just bought like the smaller things earlier on 
but it'll all work out and now at least I know that I'm not gonna forget anything because I have it all listed out what I need. The last thing I'm gonna tell you about is to get a free wedding website. You can use like Zola or The Knot and I know there's a few other ones. I would just like look it up and check out a few different website options. Um, but it's basically a free like wedding planning tool where you can also create your own customized like website for your wedding. So for your guests to see, you can add it onto the save the dates or onto the invitations. I'm using Zola.com, which I've really liked because they not only can you do the free website, you can also send out free digital save the dates. And since we are doing a destination wedding and we wanted to give people plenty of time to plan, get their passports and everything like that, being able to send it out digitally before we had everybody's addresses was super helpful. And also to be able to kind of gauge RSVPs and how many people are actually planning to attend so that we knew how to coordinate with the resort planner all of the details about food and drinks and stuff like that. So they have a free website and you can RSVP through it and you can send out save the dates digitally and they have a bunch of different designs that you can choose for the website and for the save the dates and then um, they offer all that for free basically so that you are motivated to buy stuff through their website which I did order my invites through them and then they have all the different templates and customize them and stuff but they also have like a marketplace for, or you can do your registry through them but the website's super cool like and adding like a frequently asked questions tab or like information tab on that initially um, when we first sent out the save the dates, I think was super helpful because it gave everybody just like a general idea of if you, if you want to come to our wedding, like start planning for this trip. Here's how many days the actual trip is going to be. Here's what day the actual wedding's on. And um, even though I didn't have all of the information yet, I just put it on the website that we'll be updating as we go. So to check back, you know, as we get closer to the wedding, that was super helpful. So. I can't think of anything else right now, but I will be making more videos about wedding planning. But those are the tools for when you're first getting started that I would recommend definitely taking advantage of and using throughout the whole process of your wedding planning journey. If you're not wedding planning and you're just watching because you like to hear me talk, thanks for sticking around and um, I appreciate you guys and all your support, especially those of you who have been following me since my prison videos. Um, it means a lot to see you guys supporting me and um, being excited for me as we enter this new chapter of my life. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time. Make sure you like and subscribe and leave a comment.